What's up guys, it's Rowan and Brooklyn from Art of Smart, Smart TV, TV, bringing you another episode of Hashtag Help, <laughs> which is Wait, HSC... I need to do this. <laughs> can I do this? Yeah, yeah, Hashtag you can do help. Or otherwise known as the HSC English Lit Program. Now, uh, you know, one of the key areas that we find that students just struggle with horribly is analysis. And so in today's episode, we're doing a deep dive on how do you write amazing analysis for... Uh, Henry Lawson, one of the prescribed texts for Mod A Standard English. Now, if you are what, you know, studying Henry Lawson, fantastic, stay tuned. But even if you're not, we're going to be unpacking how you good, do good analysis generally. We're going to be going through the rules and the processes. So the more you get exposed to this stuff, the better. Because in paper one, you're going to get some unseen text and you're going to have to analyze on the fly anyway. So before we dive into one of Henry Lawson's short stories, what we first want to get clear on is what is good analysis. So what is good analysis, Brooklyn? So basically there are two really crucial steps in doing good analysis. The first one is always linking your technique to your idea. So your technique might look like um, your similes, your metaphors, your pathetic fallacies, all the interesting ones. And your idea is going to be your question, your thesis, your and most specifically your topic sentence. So you want to find the link between those two things in a really meaningful way and you don't want you don't just want to label your technique then state your idea you want to actually see what what is that link between those two things um, and then the second point um, that we're going to be using to do good analysis is making sure you're actually saying something really meaningful about your idea um, what students often tend to do when they're analyzing is they'll just um, have three points in their paragraph and at the end of each point they'll state their idea and then state it again and then state it again and then we haven't gotten anywhere by the end of the paragraph we've just repeated ourselves so with each point we want to say something new and meaningful fantastic so we've got two rules for good analysis and so we're going to now unpack Henry Lawson's short story the union buries its dead um, and we're going to do so in a way that really shows you how to craft your analysis in a paragraph what we want you to do though is as we go through each section of this paragraph check in and see did we satisfy those two rules because that's a good tool for you to use in your own writing as well as part of your own reflection and editing of your paragraphs so maybe we just won't like satisfy one of those rules in, in one of these and then if you comment good on you that's you right <laughs> yeah watch out guys maybe we're going to just keep you on your toes now maybe as we said, we're going to look at the Union that buries its dead. In particular, what we're going to look at is how British religious practices are no longer relevant and how Australia is really forming a new cultural identity. I think what's really important, especially looking at the context of this poem, is that, um, yeah, th this poem was written in the mid-1890s. The Australia became a federation in 1901. So, yeah, this is like just at the cusp of Australia becoming a nation and forming its own cultural identity. And so I think what that means is it's really capturing a sense of the, the feelings that were going on and the ideas that were happening at that time. And I think Lawson does a great job of it. So we've got this idea, British religious practice is no, no longer relevant, you know, new cultural identity. Um, how are we gonna establish this? You know, what's the point we're gonna make? Uh, what's point number one? We're gonna yeah, make? so point number one is, Lawson basically points out the absurdity of inserting British funeral practices into an Australian outback landscape. And so we've got a, a quote here that I think highlights this really well, which is, the water cannot be successfully sprinkled because the quote is, the drops quickly evaporated and the hot sun meant that the guests shoved their hats on and off uneasily. Now, I think what's key here is that, you know, it, it requires you to understand British funeral practices. So it's really alluding to these fairly standard British practices. And so if you don't understand these, uh, you know, this might not make much sense. So we've got... Yeah, uh, so we've got holy water, which is sprinkled on onto the um, the guy who's died. So that that's one of the practices. And, and so that's where the, the drops quickly evaporating is... If That's an important funeral practice, It's right? pretty funny that the drops can't actually get onto him. Like That's right. Yeah. So we've got no holy water to protect him in his journey to wherever. Okay, so we've definitely got a sense of, of, of sort of humour that's starting to go through here. Um, and then, of course, um, in a British funeral, you're meant to take your hat off, which is kind of easy in England because there's not usually very much sun. But in Australia, when you really, really need your hat, 
that's kind of a bit awkward and funny. And that's, a, that's another sort of humorous thing that Lawson's bringing out here. And that's right. And so it symbolically really suggests that the British culture and religion are just incompatible with the Australian environment. Now, is it just about incompatibility with the environment um, or is it something more than just incompatibility with the environment itself? And I think I, what I think is going on there is the, in, the incompatibility with the environment is actually symbolising how Australia is forming a new cultural identity and, and British culture is just incompatible with Australian culture. And a part of that probably is the environment and the fact that it's hot and it's really hard to survive and that, um, yeah, pe people die a lot, or all those sorts of things. Um, so happy. <laughs> True. So then we've then got this ongoing idea, right, that this incompatibility of the, the religion with the British religion and, and cultural practices with the Australian outback really is starting to create a bit of a different outlook on spirituality in Australia. And this is part of this new emerging sort of cultural identity that we see being shaped here for what Australia is. And so the narrator, possibly Lawson, uh, you know, is really having a quite a nihilistic outlook on spirituality, what a word. So we've got a quote, what's the quote? I think we should just establish what nihilism is for everyone as well. So that's basically this idea that life is meaningless. That, that's the way to put it simply, I think. And I think that's important because, you know, if we're a country though without religion, like, what does that mean, right? Yeah. Um, and that's, I think, partly what we're gonna maybe see. So we've got a quote, uh, what's the quote? So he's describing the funeral procession, the people walking down um, with the coffin, and he says, perhaps not one of the 14 possessed a soul any more than the corpse did. So I mean, that is certainly uh, quite <laughs> funny again, really. <laughs> it's, um, funny. it's a bit dark. <laughs> I don't know, I find it a bit funny. Maybe it's a bit of gallows humour or whatever we yeah. want to call it. So, I mean, if we think about this, first of all, just to understand it, I mean, the idea that this guy is dead is suggesting that his soul has already passed, okay? Um, that's part of, you know, a religious belief. Um, and so if, um, you know, the 14 also don't possess a soul, but they're alive, what does that say about them, right? What does that say about Australians mm. as well? And so really what we're sort of seeing is that we've got this sense that we've got these lifeless corpses mm. um, in uh, the Australian outback. Yeah, so the technique we've got there is a comparison. Um, he's comparing the 14 alive to the, the one dead. And yeah, that, that's, as you said, showing how as th these people in the outback have become um, lifeless, corpse, lifeless corpses. You know, so the point here is, you know, what, what's the point of the fact that he's, he's saying that these guys are, are, are lifeless corpses? Well, I think it's interesting because he ends this statement with something more. What is he going to say? Well, he, he basically ends up saying that doesn't matter, which again to me symbolises this extra layer of nihilism. Like, it doesn't even matter to him that people don't have souls. Like, it seems pretty depressing. But I think it's also a point that they're not necessary, all this, you know, religious component isn't necessary to life in the outback. You know, it, it maybe gets in the way of survival as we've seen in the prior examples, right? Like not wearing a hat, you get some cancer, uh-oh. Um, and I think what I find interesting as well in all of this is, you know, that it's, it's just really, I think, highlighting very much this idea that, um, you know, Australians, uh, you know, don't have this spirituality. It's a distinct difference with uh, you know what we're seeing from this British religious cultural identity yeah and they're struggling with that they they don't have this spirituality which came from Britain so so where are they going to find their identity um, especially in this crucial moment in Australia as it's about to become a nation um, and that sort of leads us into our next point yeah so we've got uh, you know the, the narrator is asked if he knew the name of the dead man and he responds no, but I knew he was a union man. What's going on here? Yeah, cool. So basically what happens, eventually in the end we do find out the man's name, but at this point the narrator doesn't even know the name of the dead man that this whole story is about. And yeah, that, that's really showing this, this lack of identity. But then his identity is brought back by this idea that he's a union man. And potentially that is the, the new cultural identity that Lawson is um, suggesting that people in the society have. And I think it's probably something even more than, uh, well, I think it is the cultural identity, but I think what's interesting about the union is, um, you know, religion is something that's been passed down, you know, from generation to generation. It's these ancient texts. Um, it's been passed from Britain to Australia. 
the union here is something that is created by the members for the members in a particular area. So it's really where uh, you know meaning is being created and they're creating the meaning for themselves. And I think that's what's really interesting about the description of this you know dead man's identity as a union man. Um, you know, when I read that, I really see that as really an identity that's been self-constructed rather than borrowed from somewhere else, which is, again, really what's happening in Australia right mm. now. We're going through this exact process of defining our own identity. Yeah, and I think it's important that he's chosen the union, the, being the trade union. What's a trade union, Rowan? So a trade union is essentially when a, a group of typically workers in a certain industry come together um, as a group to negotiate with an employer uh, to obtain uh, you know, a certain set of working conditions and rights. Um, and historically, that was very, very important, um, ensuring that you know, workers uh, you know, had five-day working weeks, you know, yeah. 38-hour working weeks. You know. 48 at this point. It was, that's what they were fighting for. Well, okay. <laughs> Things have changed. Um, yeah. And I think that's the point here, really, is that you know, uh, to live in Australia is a story of survival. Yeah. And the only way they've been able to survive is to, to, to form these unions, right? These unions of other humans, soulless they may be, um, to come together to survive these harsh conditions. And so when you've got all of these, uh, you know, um, you know these, these contextual things going on here of Australia leaving the, the British Union and maybe becoming our, you know, our own independent country shortly, and we've got these you know, fights against employers for better working rights. And at this time, there are a lot of strikes going on in the 1890s in Australia. So, you know, we're really seeing that, that actually there is a strong identity that's being crafted and created here. Um, and it's unique and it's different to, you know, this British cultural heritage um, that we had adopted for so long. So, is there anything more we want to say here before we wrap this paragraph up? Yeah, just to make the analysis clear, we're saying that um, the technique is a lack of name. Um, the, or that, that's not a technique you'd normally hear in a, a textbook. But um, basically what's happening is Lawson is has chosen not to give him a name at this point in the story in order to have the effect of his identity being a union man. And I think there's also then the added technique of the symbolism of what a union man means. Mm. Um, it has a lot of meaning here in terms of, uh, you know, a union being created by members, for members. It's this idea of self-creation of identity and meaning, which I think is a really important idea that sits... Um, you know, in this short story, particularly as we progress towards its conclusion. Yeah. Cool. So, and then the effect of that is that they've got this new cultural identity that they haven't fully formed, but they're grappling with, and it's different to the British culture. Awesome. So there you have it, guys. We've unpacked for you a paragraph of analysis for, uh, you know, the union buries its dead, Henry Lawson. If you have any questions about this, leave it in the comments below. Uh, if you need any help uh, for HSC English, for Henry Lawson or another text. Get in touch with the team at Art of Smart. We've got some incredible teachers, tutors and mentors that can support with you to transform your approach to English. If you haven't already, hit subscribe and make sure you check the button for notifications. We bring videos to you every single week. So we will see you next week.